love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen, coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. All right. In today's episode, I felt called to really talk about dieting and our mindset around food and maybe even the rules that we were brought up with and we don't even realize are ingrained in our brains. So I'm really looking forward to this episode with all of you because personally in my journey, I dealt with a lot of this restrictive eating, this disordered eating, And these myths and rules that I thought I had to stick with in order to feel confident in my skin, in order to lose weight, in order to be quote unquote healthy, I thought these were the rules I had to follow. And so um, I do want to give you a warning at the beginning of this episode, we might touch on disordered eating, restrictive eating, and all of those things. So if that is something you're still healing with and working through, might not be something you want to listen to. However, if it's something that you feel like you could relate to, just because I'm sharing a little bit about me and even some things that my clients have been through. Keep listening and I think you're going to really enjoy because you're not alone. So many women that I work with deal with this on a regular basis. They grow up with these rules and the thing is when things were taught at a young age, they stick with us. It's kind of crazy. Even if the most bizarre things that can be told to us at a young age, like some of the ones I heard um, growing up, it was like rolls make rolls. And so it made me never want to eat rolls. And um, oh, if about like rice and corn, it was like, someone told me that's what pigs eat. And so I thought, oh, I can't eat those. Those are unhealthy. And that's, I don't want to be a pig. And just all of these bizarre things that stuck with me. And and for so long, it's so interesting how your mind and body can be related. I would get physically ill after eating some of those foods. um, And it's almost like I forced myself to become that. It took a long time, even within my recovery, I still struggled with those foods. I still struggled to eat rice or corn. And I think it was the past two years, I finally gotten to the point where I'm able to eat it and not not deal with anything. And I know a lot of my clients deal with this too, where they were taught that you're not supposed to feel full. You're always supposed to feel a little bit hungry after you eat, like when you're eating. And um, so if they would get full, it would lead to this, this feeling of guilt and shame and even actions as far as like expelling that food, getting rid of it. And all of these things are real and things so many women deal with or have dealt with. And if you're somewhere on your journey, I really recommend to ask for help um, to reach out to a professional because you're not alone and I don't want you to feel like you need to hide um, in shame because of any of this because so many women deal with this. I want to kind of lean to the lighter side of things and just kind of go through different food rules that I've heard people say. So I asked my Facebook community, PS, quick plug, if you're not a part of my Body Confident Blueprint Facebook community, go ahead and go on to Facebook right now click in the search bar body confident blueprint and it should be the first one to pop up and join because we talk about a lot of these things in here we dive deep and it is a private community and I only accept women who I know are a good fit in that community so you can feel like you are in a safe space if you do choose to share or if you just want to learn from others and learn from me when I'm going live in the group so definitely go search that but in that plug. So I ask my Facebook community, what are some diet quote unquote rules you had to unlearn over the past few years? And I have a bunch of them all list out and I can kind of go through them, but quick fixes exist. So there are such things as quick fixes, but <laughs> fat is bad. Restrict calories extremely to lose weight. Food is a reward and treat it as a treat. And um, I'll get into that one as well. Uh, This next rule, if you overeat or quote unquote eat bad, you need to punish your body. This is a big one with whether it's punishing with cardio, um, some sort of disordered eating, restricting the next day, guilt, shame, all of that. Uh, Carbs are bad. Um, This idea that if you want to lose weight, just don't eat. Ugh, that makes me so angry. Like all of those phrases I remember saving on Pinterest and it would be like, Um, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels or like, oh gosh, I don't even like my brain is, I feel like I've healed from that so much. I don't even want to tap into it, but for you guys, I want to, but all of those things were just bullshit. 
and things that we were just being taught because our worth was so tied to fitting a certain size. And there's nothing, like I said, you guys know me, there's nothing wrong with weight loss. But if we are centering it around these ideas that society is telling us, like, oh, you have to get smaller because that's how you're accepted. And you have to do these things because that's the only way you'll be happy or be loved or be enough. And that's bullshit. If you want to lose weight for other reasons for yourself, I am all for helping you. But if you're trying to do it for someone else, you will always be let down and you will always be unsatisfied because even when you lose the weight, you'll still find feel unhappy and you'll still struggle with your confidence. And I don't want that for you because I struggle with that for years, even when I was smaller than I am now, which is so interesting. So the biggest one on here is like food is fuel. I heard that all the time and it was like a way for people to basically be like, just treat food like it's fuel. That way you don't have to have any like cheat days or snacks or whatever. And I hate that term cheat day. And I'm calling bullshit on that too, because if food was just here for us only strictly to fuel ourselves, first of all, like we're not, we're not cavemen anymore. It's not just fuel. And even in those past times, they would have celebrations and, and I'm talking about like cavemen, but you know, just thinking back to historical times, like food was a way to celebrate and tradition and holidays and weddings and birthdays. And we still do that. And it is a part of our history. And I think that if you completely step out away from food and just say, no, it's only fuel. I feel like you're missing out on a big part of your life. Honestly, like I think that because you, if you're constantly like, no, I'll just say no to anything that's not fuel. So I'm just going to say no to every single holiday, um, dish that that's served. I'm going to say no to every single birthday cake that I'm after. I'm going to say no to every single memory that I could have by baking cookies with my kids or with my partner or by myself. And I just honestly don't feel like that's fully living. If you're so focused on food being fuel, it almost makes you think about it more. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you get so caught up in the food rules of like, this is good, this is bad. When you're trying to restrict all you do, I mean, think about the last time you went on a restrictive diet, all you're doing is thinking about what you cannot eat, right? That's all you're doing. And that's no way to live. You are occupying your brain with all the time of feeling like you cannot have these things. And if you would just release and break up with the idea of good and bad food, you would have so much more space in your mind to occupy with all the amazing things you can create, all the amazing things you can do. And you'll no longer feel stuck to these rules that you were brought up with. And my goal as a coach and something that I do and what I want you guys to learn even just a little bit coming away from this episode today is that you can become an active participant in your choices and break up with good and bad and breaking up with rules. So instead of feeling like you just have to follow these rules that someone else tells you in order to make your goal goals happen, you can actually start to become an active participant in everything that you do. And then you're not going to be wrong. You'll be listening to your body in a way that's smart. Now I'll tell you as far as listening to your body and your food choices, it starts with a level of knowledge. So the biggest way to break free is knowledge. Knowledge is key. So if you can get a better understanding and grounding of what nutrition just behind what you're putting into your body, what are macronutrients, what are micronutrients, carbs, fats, and proteins, when I'm eating, what does it make up? You'll recognize that like everything we eat is macronutrients and there's ways to have a a balance that feels really good for you and your body. You can find a way to take an approach towards your food that doesn't feel like you have to keep going on diet after diet and keep feeling like a failure because that's what tends to happen with all these diets. So I I have a list pulled up and I guess I'll run through it real quickly, but I don't want to give too much time to it. Of all the different diets that we see, and there's hundreds, y'all, hundreds. And the truth is a lot of them are just old diets that are repackaged with new like hot phrases, new phrases that make people want to like click on them because they think, oh, this is like the new like catchphrase that everyone wants. So they'll they'll change it and repackage it, even if it's the same shit, different day. So whether it's Weight Watchers, Atkins, um, low, low carb diet, zone diet, your blood type diet, South Beach diet, Nutrisystem, keto, like the list goes on. There are so many different things that other people are trying to push on you. And the truth is, if there are commercials about these, most likely just knock them out. Like if someone is getting advertising, paid advertising to sell you on this, I'm going to say no real quick. And then even with the other kinds, most likely it's a restrictive diet. Most likely it is a a short-term solution to a long-term issue, underlying issue. And most likely it's mindset and it's habits and it's things that you really need to work on that have nothing to do with 
cutting out all of this crazy everything out of your diet because then you're just unhappy, miserable, frustrated because let's say maybe you lose weight from one of these diets here, but then later on you gain it back and some. And it's because the way that it's created, these diets are designed for you to fail. Because then what are you going to do? You're going to pay for it again. You're like, I need to do better. Like I wasn't, I wasn't disciplined enough. I hear women say this all the time. Like I just need more discipline. And the truth is you just need to break up with these bullshit programs that have told you that that's their solution. That if you don't do this, if this doesn't work for you, it's your fault. They point the finger back at you because guess what? That keeps them making money from you over and over and over again. And I'm calling bullshit on that. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all of these companies profiting off of our insecurities. I see it happen over and over again. They use these phrases, they use these terms, and it just makes me crazy. It makes me absolutely crazy. And so, like I said, they'll take these these programs and they'll just repackage them each year. Like um, Weight Watchers is now like Weight Watchers reimagined. And like they're trying to get all into this like intuitive side of things because what are people looking at? They're looking at intuitive eating. They're looking at all the things. And the truth is, is if you can get a better understanding and a basis of nutrition in general, you'll know longer be swayed by this crazy advertising by people trying to use propaganda and terms and clickbait to essentially get you to buy their bullshit products. And so if you're thinking about a supplement that someone's trying to tell you is like the solution, like, oh, it's this apple cider vinegar pill, or oh, it's this appetite suppressant pill, or this thing that helps with just completely burning your calorie, burning your fat or whatever, just complete crap. Like if it's a pill, a magic pill or magic supplement, no, that's that's not the solution. The solution is really breaking up with these diets completely, breaking up with the idea and the rules that you've been taught and figuring out what it is that you want to accomplish. And then once you get a better understanding of what you want, you can, cur- you can start to find a balance that works for you. So for example, my balance that works for me is taking a, a 80-20 approach, more of a balanced approach to what I'm eating. And so 80% of my foods, I am focused on whole foods. I'm focused on protein and fiber and whole high nutrient dense foods. But then 20%, I'm focused on that soul food. And what I mean by soul food is the food that's more than just fuel, you know, the food that just um, lifts me up and maybe is not, maybe it is lower nutrients, maybe it's not. Um, but just 20% of that is just, I'm doing it for for my soul and not necessarily for fuel. Um, um, I still enjoy whole foods like crazy. I absolutely love cooking and I love cooking using whole foods, but you're allowed to have both. And instead of trying to be all or nothing with your approach to nutrition, if you can get a better balanced approach to it, you're not going to get into that crazy um, cycle. And what I mean by that cycle is that binge, like you're basically like, okay, I'm going to go on this diet. And this diet that you're going on involves restricting, whether it's calorie restriction or you're restricted to only eat these foods or you can't eat this or whatever and you do it and then at some point something's got to give and then as soon as it does it doesn't just give a little bit it gives a lot and you end up leaning all the way to the other side of things and it can lead to a binge it can lead to you late night like eating a tub of ice cream all of it because you're like I just need to get this out of my house so I need to eat it now and we justify it in our minds or we're eating and we don't even realize that we ate all of this because we're almost hypnotized because we've been restricting ourselves so much we we get on the other side of things. And then as soon as that happens, almost directly after you come out of a binge, you feel so freaking guilty. You feel ashamed. You feel like you don't want people to even know that you've dealt with this. And what does that lead to next? Oh, I just need to be more disciplined. And then you go into that restrict again. You're like, I'm going to get everything out of my house. I'm going to be so disciplined. And then you know what happens? Yeah, maybe you got out of your house, but then you find yourself driving through a drive through and getting way more food than you were planning and eating it by yourself and you're hiding all the trash. And like, again, you're into another binge and it's scary because again, you don't even realize you're doing it and you feel like I cannot stop. This feels uncontrollable and you're just overwhelmed with guilt. And so how do you break up with this? Um, well, first of all, rules don't work because if you're creating more and more rules, you're going to stay stuck in this restrict binge guilt cycle. And to pull yourself out of it, you have to break up with 
the rules. And then you also have to break up with mindless eating because that can be really easy to get into too. Like you're, you're completely tied to things. But my issue is that people are always like, okay, well, you just need to look at food as, as fuel and you just need to break up with um, emotional eating. And when people say that, it bothers me because <laughs> the idea of emotionless eating, like eating with zero emotion, sounds terrible. The, eat, the idea of just eating with only the intent of fueling your body, I mean, that sounds terrible too. You're not enjoying your food. You're not being present with mealtime. And so I disagree with both of those things. I think you absolutely should have emotion attached to your food in a beautiful way. And you should feel grateful when you're enjoying this food and not feel guilty and not feel shame. You should feel so thankful that your go- your um, your body is processing this and you know, you're creating energy from it. You're creating amazing things from the food that you're taking in and you're able to show yourself love and show others love through the food that you're eating, whether it's the nutrient dense food we're talking about or the soul food that we're talking about. There's a way to enjoy both and a way to show yourself love with both types of foods, soul food that's maybe not as nutrient dense and high nutrient dense whole foods. Both are good. So instead of trying to break up with emotion, and feeling like you have to eat emotionless and you can only eat food as fuel, let's start with focusing on like what it is that that matters to you when it comes to food. Like what makes you happy? What are foods that you really, really enjoy? And incorporate those into your diet. Now, if you really, really do enjoy, um, I don't know, donuts or ice cream, like it doesn't mean you need to eat it every day, but it also doesn't mean you need to cut it out completely. That's not the solution either. It's okay, how can I incorporate this in a way that feels good? And usually after I say this, the very next question people say are like, well, I can't just eat just one Oreo or I can't just eat one scoop of ice cream. Like I really, really struggle with that. And I understand because I struggle with that too. And so my first step, my solution, I'm going to use the ice cream example. So um, when I really struggled with eating, it was definitely like Ben and Jerry's and I, I would joke about it and it's not so funny, but I would call it binge and Jerry's because I would late night like eat an entire pint of ice cream by myself. I always would feel guilty. Um, sometimes it led to me um, getting sick intentionally and it was a constant battle. It was a constant loop. And so my solution, I was like, well, I can't, I can't have ice cream in the house. I can't do that. And the truth is that wasn't the solution because then every single time I was around it, I was like, oh, I haven't had this. Like, this is my only chance. Like, this is a treat. This is, I'm on vacation. Like we'd, we'd find ways to justify it, right? Like, oh, I never have this. And, and I hear women use that phrase all the time. Like, it's just a treat or it's, we're on vacation. And if you're feeling like you have to eat differently when you're in different environments, Environments, I don't think that's necessarily a balanced solution. So refocusing, I'm getting back onto the, the ice cream example. So my solution um, with the ice cream was, okay, instead of if I really do struggle with eating the whole thing, I actually went to have a different option. And so instead of feeling guilty, I found like uh, the Halo Top ice cream and it was like, it was definitely if you ate the whole pint, it was a little bit more doable. I didn't feel as sick. It wasn't as high calories. So I didn't feel like like terrible. I didn't feel like really bloated and sick after. And that was my first solution was like, Hey, like I'm going to just start with this so that if I do eat the whole thing, I'll feel good. I can kind of break up with it. So that was truly my first step. And this is my experience. It doesn't mean that that's your solution. Then my next step was like with that, being able to like choose like how much I ate of it. So instead of eating it all in one sitting, I would plan for it and, and I would do it in a way that I was intentional. So instead of saying like, instead of getting tired and waking up in the middle of the night or just using waiting till everyone else is asleep and then eating all this ice cream I was very intentional with like hey I plan for this like I'm gonna enjoy my dessert after I eat my dinner or whenever and I was doing it in a way where I was putting it into a bowl and I was um, adding fruit or I was adding whipped cream or I was just being very like enjoying it and doing it in a way where I wasn't shame eating in the corner um, sitting on the kitchen counter I was and I was no longer doing that I was eating with someone or by myself but like enjoying it outside on the on a the balcony or whatever. So being able to do that helped me get a better relationship with that ice cream. And then as I started to feel better about it, I got better and I actually started to incorporate Ben and Jerry's again. And so I had gotten used to having the ice cream in the freezer and not eating it all in one one fell swoop. So I started to do that again with Ben and Jerry's or going out to have some ice cream or something like that. And just being more intentional with what I was having instead of feeling like I had to feel guilty and eat it away from everyone or like in like shame 
and guilt way. I just was like, how can I incorporate this in a way that feels intentional, that feels like I'm enjoying it and I'm present with it. And it's not like I'm doing it out of a negative emotion. Like I'm sad. I had a bad day. I need to eat all this ice cream. It's more like, hey, this is what I want. I want to enjoy it and I'm going to do so. And so finding your balance, and that is, again, my example, not everyone's example. That's just something that might work for you. Um, So just being more intentional with it. I also recognize like later at night, I don't make as good of choices. Like, does it matter if you eat late at night? Like that whole rule? No, it doesn't make a difference. However, I know myself, like if I am getting later at night, um, I do struggle to be more intentional with my food. So I try, if I am going to have um, some type of dessert or whatever, I do try to have it earlier on again. So then I'm like actively, like I'm very intentional about this food I'm eating. I'm breaking up with the mindless eating. So that's just my solution. That's something I can do, but I still enjoy myself and also recognizing, okay, um, when you are going into like birthdays or holidays or traveling, like figuring out like, is this something that I'm like so excited to um, enjoy and to make a memory from because I'm going to this like really cool food truck event or I'm going to this amazing like I'm going to Italy and I want to have this amazing pasta and try this stuff like absolutely do it but if you're going on a vacation and then you guys are going to like a Chili's like or an Arby's or a I can't think of another but some chain restaurant maybe that's not something where you need to you need to like tell yourself oh I'm on vacation but instead just be like okay I'm going to make something like a a choice towards something that's more nutrient dense um that feels really good for me that fuels me up makes me feel good and I'm going to save um eating like more soul food of a choice later because I want to go out to this really cool ice cream place later down the road. And so that's how you can find more of a balanced approach. And it just takes you taking a step back. And instead of going into one mode or the other, and what I mean by one mode or the other is like being on this restrictive mode, like Monday through Thursday, and then the weekends, you're like in weekend mode. And then on vacation, that's like even crazier. And you're in vacation mode. Like that is a, a, a way of justifying our actions and a way of going into autopilot and kind of letting shit happen happen to us instead of you being intentional with what you want. And so I want you to take time whenever you're going into the season with the springtime, like when you have holidays and things coming up, just you deciding like what feels best for you as far as finding a balance. And I told you my 80-20 approach, that's what I do. I also think that it's so important to have a a basis, a basic knowledge of nutrition. So if you're going into the springtime and you feel like all you've been doing is following rules and dieting, I highly recommend you get a better understanding of macronutrients. It's something I teach in my Body Confident Blueprint program. I help my clients do that so that they can understand how to track macros in order to understand the food that they're taking in and then eventually get towards intuitive eating and then they can make those choices on their own with actual knowledge. Because when I, if I told you right now, just listen to your body, that's pretty freaking hard with your body if you're constantly craving like cake at midnight and you're like, I'm just listening to my body because that's not necessarily the best thing for your body late at night. Is it the end of the world? Should we feel guilty? No, but it also doesn't mean that that's the solution either. So I think knowledge is power. That's the first place to be. And then you can get to more of an intuitive style where you are listening to your body, but that's because there's knowledge to back it. Um, I hope this was helpful for you to listen to. I know it was a mouthful, but it's because this is something I could probably spend three hours talking about, basically because my Body Confident Blueprint modules, like this nutrition module especially, I do spend about like two hours, I think, talking about. So um, this was a very condensed version. If you want more, make sure that you apply to my next round of BCB. Just a quick plug here. Um, If you're like, that's not for me, you don't know yet, but you can at least go into the Facebook group Body Confident Blueprint and start listening to more of the live conversations, getting more connected with the other women in the group. Um, And I look forward to hearing from you there. If this was a helpful episode for you, please let me know your biggest takeaway. Take a screenshot, share this and tag me at Jago Fit Life or at Confidently Uncomfortable. You guys are amazing. I look forward to talking to you more. And remember, food is more than just fuel. So don't feel like you have to create all these rules for the springtime to lose weight. You can absolutely Absolutely start loving yourself, feeling confident in your skin now, and losing weight in a way that is body positive approach and not restrictive. Hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, Go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot support at jagofit360.com for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.